President Biden has announced the release of one million barrel of oil a day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve, the largest release from the National Reserve in its history. The move is the latest effort by the administration to lower gas prices. President Biden continued to blame Putin and his war in Ukraine for the record high prices. Our prices are rising because of Putin's action. There isn't enough supply. And the bottom line is, if we want lower gas prices, we need to have a more oil supply right now. Between wrapping up, ramping up production in the short term and driving down demand in the long term, we can free ourselves from our dependence on imported oil from across the world. Look, I know gas prices are painful. I get it. My plan is going to help ease that pain today and safeguard again against tomorrow. I'm going to continue to use every tool at my disposal to protect you from Putin's price hike. Energy prices have been spiking since Russia invaded Ukraine, destabilizing the global energy market. This marks the third time the U.S. has tapped its strategic reserves in the past six months. The oil will be made available for about six months, beginning in May. Next week, executives from six of the largest oil companies will testify to Congress about the surging gas prices. Joining me here on set, it's April 1st, but he's nobody's fool, White House reporter for Bloomberg News, Josh Wingrove. Josh, thank you for being here. Uh, let's start back up a step. We know the EU and China are talking today. What does the White House hope to accomplish? Or what do they hope that message is sent from the EU to China, which we know seems to be going out of its way to remain as neutral as possible in this, despite pressure from Washington to help out. Yeah, you know, one person's neutrality is another person's uh, compl being complicit with the right. situation, I suppose. I mean, the U.S. is going to hope that the EU reads from the same song sheet that they've been reading from, saying that if you're not engaged helping Ukraine, if you're not sanctioning Russia, then you are at least implicitly supporting Russia, or at least not condemning it. And so the fear in the West has been that yeah, uh, China will continue to support uh, Russia, and that could take many paths, John. That could be direct aid, hardware, this kind of stuff, supplies, or it could be sales to help uh, Russia evade some of the sanctions that have been put on it. In other words, if you're trying to apply pressure to sort of limit Putin's options to raise money, sell stuff, if you bring a sort of China-sized leak in that, then that makes it a lot harder to put pressure on Russia and uh, Russia's economy. So I think they're just hoping that the EU sort of stands firm. The EU does have differences of views about how strongly to go on China. We've seen some countries sort of say that we should pump the brakes a little bit on, on being hawkish. But I, I, Joe Biden will be watching this, certainly, to, to hope that the EU delivers the same message, which is that the West is watching and that uh, Xi Jinping, if, if they sort of dip a toe into the water of supporting uh, Russia overtly, they're going to face a similar reaction as Russia. So the White House is keenly aware of the rising gas prices, the political fallout as yeah. well. We heard from the president yesterday tapping uh, the reserves. But how is he, how are officials telling you that he can balance that need to try to keep gas prices down with his climate initiatives, which are trying to stay away from more fossil fuels? Yeah, it's a, it's a shift. I mean, Joe Biden took office talking about four concurrent crises. One was climate change. And in the last week, he's embraced oil and gas in an unprecedented way for him since his presidency began. And he, of course, is doing that because he has to. The, as you mentioned, the price of oil, Putin's war is sending shocks through the system. Countries like the U.S. have banned Russian oil entirely. That sort of accelerates that shot. So here we're drawing down the SPR, you know, 180 million barrels over the next six months. SPR is four salt caverns, John, in the Gulf of Mexico. So America's hottest club, you know, four salt caverns <laughs> that we're going to be drawing down here to try to uh, level up. This is the biggest thing they've done with the SPR ever. I mean, it's just unprecedented. And so his hope here is that that supplies the market in the short term and that they're going to put bait on the line in the long term to get the U.S. to drill more, both for oil and for gas. Because remember, in Europe, he announced this deal to try to wean right. Europe off Russian gas, the goal being that American gas will sort of fill the void. But yeah, Joe Biden has sort of gone to this sort of drill baby drill mentality here to try to address the, 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 the crude shock that has come from this uh, Hard crisis. to imagine this 18 months or so ago. Right. And Josh, lastly, the, the White House, you know, they know there's only so many options they have. They're applying as much pressure as they can on Putin, you know, but short of a direct military engagement, which is not going to happen, this war sort of ends when Putin decides yeah. that it will. And we're seeing a new front again from this pressure campaign, though, which is the idea of putting intelligence out there, reminiscent of what they did before the war. And, and we've heard in the last couple of days talking about how Putin's getting bad information, his generals might be 
under house arrest. What's the, what's the further strategy behind this? What are they hoping to do to Putin by putting this all out there? Yeah, they've been holding their cards back, except when they decided not to hold their cards back. So, yeah, you mentioned the U.S. officials said it, and then Kate Bedingfield said it a couple of days ago. And then Joe Biden said it yesterday, and in particular said he think you mentioned the House arrest or even firing of officials. Yeah. They danced around who that could be. Of course, some of the more high-profile ministers haven't been seen a lot no. lately. Uh, so they're, they are, they're, they're sort of signaling here that they think that there is more disarray here than is be, being let on. However, some people are looking at the Russian movements right now and thinking that maybe they're pulling back from Kyiv and sort of central and even, you know, further western Russia and focusing on the Donbass, the south, the east. Uh, Biden poured cold water on that yesterday. He said it's too early to say Putin, you know, uh, you, just we don't know. We, we're not willing to trust this guy. Ron Klain said distrust but verify when he's speaking to MSNBC yesterday. So uh, the good news is they think that uh, Putin's house is in an order. The bad news is that he, they don't think that the, the conflict is ending anytime soon. Right. And the bombardments continue. And certainly I think that they, they enjoy tweaking Putin, a former intelligence officer himself, do. by saying, hey, we know what's happening in your backyard. Josh Wingrove from Bloomberg News, always a pleasure, my friend. Enjoy your weekend.